welcome to my channel, Let's Just Look Up. So today I'm going to be sharing you recipes that you can try at home, Japanese recipes that, I can, that you can try at home. They're very interesting and at this video I'm going to be telling you how to cook Japanese for the whole day. So let's get started. So the first for breakfast is a Japanese table breakfast. Contains of tamagoyaki, salmon fish, green tea, and many other side dishes like um, you could make a some kind of vegetable thing or you could make miso soup Japanese breakfast contains miso soup tamagoyaki salmon fish and a side of green tea with some chopsticks perfect so when you're making tamagoyaki the motion to make it is a fine art and skill that you have to learn before you even try to make it so you have to buy, have a rectangular pan a re this rectangular pan is especially made for making tamagoyaki and you have to put egg mixture very thin add in any fillings of your type you could use nori seaweed and cheese or you could make it plain and add mayo it will be very nice you could have you have to pour the egg very thin and roll it and then you push it to the side and you pour and do it until the egg mixture is done and add your fillings to your type and it's completely nice so when you're cooking salmon you um you know you bathe it in a special mixture like you put it and then you fry it so it makes it nice so what the mixture contains is sesame oil coconut oil and sugar and salt like you, you can add all these you could also add soy sauce if you want extra salt here but that mixture you could rub it you have to rub it on the fish place parchment paper on the pan and add some oil and put the fish on it and you roast it for like three or four minutes until it gets all crispy and nice and browned on the outside and inside and then you put it and serve it on a plate two salmon steaks for two per people so then we have lunch lunch is like Oh, people have a typical lunch like salad or anything healthy or anything that adults prefer to eat that they think is healthy and give like school and normal school lunches for kids. But in Japan, Japan, they make bento boxes. Bento boxes are a really nice trend in Japan and it's still going on. Some moms get up early at 6 a.m. to make their children bento before they wake up and then they wake them up, give them breakfast and give them their bento to school. And what are the ingredients you, in the bento, you might wonder? Fried chicken, veg, vegetables like tomato and lettuce, and then deep fried tofu, onigiri, and like leftover from breakfast. Like some moms put leftover from dinner and leftover from breakfast, like tamagoyaki from leftover yesterday's breakfast. They refrigerate it or maybe heat it up again. And then they loosen it up a little bit, put the tamagoyaki in and buy some more nice warm egg. Everybody loves a warm egg. And like every single, like I saw a video of them making a karaben bento. And then like, oh, I forgot to tell you what karaben is. Karaben is also known as character bento. And when they were making that bento, I saw a video and then the... When they op when the kid opened it at school, her face reaction was so extremely cute. Like, oh, she smiled like so much. Like she smiled like she was getting something like an amazing gift. Like she smiled so much, and it was so cute. The reaction was awesome. So make sure you try that out. Or if you're a parent watching this, please try it out for your kid. It's amazing. Your kid will love it. She, he or she will eat your eat, eat the vegetables that you give in the bento because they're so cute. And also the way of making it, like how you make onigiri, I'm going to tell you. And so when you make onigiri, it's like you have rice ball. Like onigiri is a rice ball stuffed with fillings. You could put umeboshi inside, which is also pickle plum. And you could add like salmon or any other vegetables you're liking, but salmon is a staple in onigiri, so make sure you mix that up. And then you wrap it with nori seaweed. You could fully entirely wrap it, or if you really like a lot of seaweed, that's okay, you can fully entirely wrap it and stick the seaweed with water, or and you can wrap it. But for normal people, they take a little strip of nori, like it's this thick, the, the strip is this thick, and they wrap it around the bottom of the onigiri. And they place like a little tofu hat, like abroage, 
Aburage is called deep fried tofu. Deep fried tofu is called aburage. That's the Japanese name for it. And they put like a little hat on the origiri. And then they put like cut little eyes out in the seaweed and they put it in. And it's so cute. Like so cute. I can never imagine. That's how cute it is. So like and then you can put some kind of vegetables. You can put cherry tomatoes. You can put lettuce. You can put like roasted cabbage. You can put beef sprouts. Any vegetables to your liking. Place some place some lettuce on the bento box, and then you put all the ingredients and all the other stuff, and then you arrange it carefully. It's like oh, it's so beautiful when you just look at it. It looks like like people just staring at you, and you, then you fry the chicken, put it in, add cherry, add some more cherry tomatoes, add salt or any seasoning to your children's liking. Well, bam, common. Then for dinner, like all the most classic dinners, when Japanese people go out for dinner, they basically just order o- okonomiyaki. So the way of describing okonomiyaki is a savory pancake. It comes in two styles, which is one is Osaka style and the second one is Hiroshima style. So people who grew up in Osaka and Hiroshima have their own styles, but you can make it like I say, or you could try your own recipe. Maybe check Google. It'll be nice. And then like how you do it like you take rice flour and add some water and just mix it to make a simple batter you put it on and spread it around and then you put cabbage on it you put cabbage and then bean sprouts you can add any vegetable but cabbage and bean sprouts are a staple in okonomiyaki so don't forget to add that then you crack egg on the pan and you can like smoosh the egg and maybe put it on top of it and then you flip it it's extremely good and then you add a sauce called okonomiyaki sauce. Okonomiyaki sauce is a sauce which you can find on many Asian grocery stores or Japanese grocery stores. It's all over Asia. Like, it's a popular, so- popular sauce. And you can add yakisoba noodles, which is a type of noodles. It's like it's very stringy and thin. It cooks really fast in water. You add a little bit of water to the pan and you like just spread it out and you add the noodles and you add the okonomiyaki sauce to the noodles and then you put it on the egg and then you add more okonomiyaki sauce you spread it out and then um yeah and put bonito flakes mayonnaise and actually this might scare you but if you put bonito flakes or fish flakes on top of something that's hot it moves, it kind of looks like it's dancing like this. Oh, yes, I'm dancing on the fan. <laughs> That's extremely funny, but don't be scared if you saw it. But it's just heat and pressure is just making it move. So, and then you serve it, and you could add mayonnaise or any other sauces or seasoning to your liking. And that's it. It's extremely delicious. Don't forget to try it. You can cut it with chopsticks, eat it like it's sushi. Well, it's almost sushi, but... It doesn't have the rice and the fish. Oh, it has fish. It has fish. It has fish. It has bonito. Okay? So, then you want dessert. You're kind of hungry. You're feeling for something sweet. I bet you want to grab this on off of your rice cooker. So, everybody loves rice cookers. They're very good. They good steam rice. They make fluffy rice. Like, the, when, you, when you just press it, press, press it, it comes into a paste. That kind of rice, which you can eat with chopsticks. Like, you can just pick it up. And they make that nice fluffy rice. But did you know that if you get to know your rice cooker, it's your friend and you can make many, many things out of it. Like a fluffy pancake. Souffle pancakes are popular in Japan. But this recipe is going to be really to your liking and you're going to crave it always. Like, And then you make like cheesecake batter. So this cheesecake batter is extremely different. But it's just a little tweak down, down that... It's different, but it's basically almost common to normal cheesecake batter. So you add two eggs, and then you add cream cheese, and you whip it up. But you don't whip the butter alone. You add the butter to the cream cheese mix, and then you whip it, and you whip the dry ingredients separately, like all the stuff, to make a cake. And then you add in like some kind of, like all the che- ingredients to a jiggly cheesecake. And then you whip, take it and whip it all together. Make some batter nice. Make it nice and smooth. Pop it in a rice cooker. Steam it for 10 to 15 minutes. You get, pop that good cheesecake out. It's amazing. Serve it with some strawberries. Add syrup to your liking. 
And yeah, that's the Jiggly Cheesecake for Japanese people. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you try out all these new recipes. Please try it out. It's extremely fun. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel by Shusulogun. Hit the notification bell and the like button. Stay tuned for more videos that I upload. And see you guys next time. Bye!